When we started this, it was definitely our passion project. Every time we go to an event or every time we talk to someone like you guys or clients, our end goal is to make sure that people understand what Vietnamese coffee is. I'm Paula Cruz Cal, and I am technically, I guess, CEO, um, and I'm in charge of like the admin, marketing, customer-facing side of the business. Uh, my name is Hong. Uh, I'm the operations of Finbar, so I'm basically the chef in the back. A lot of people ask us what is Finbar. So essentially we are a coffee business that specializes in Vietnamese coffee. So if folks have never had Vietnamese coffee before, what that is is super strong coffee mixed with sweet and condensed milk. Um, but what makes us even more different is that we serve everything cocktail style. Because catering is technically like our mode of like serving our coffee. Imagine walking into work at like nine in the morning and then you see this full bar set up complete with bartenders, music, you know, but instead of alcohol, we serve Vietnamese coffee. I would be mixing the condensed milk and the coffee at the same time, uh, everything would start separating. And so that's why I had to incorporate shaking it with a shaker here in order for it to uniformly mix together, especially the coconut, which drive me nuts because it would start separating. And so that's why we did this. So this is kind of the instrument that we use to, when we show up on site, to create our coffee. It's a two-part ingredient. So you get the condensed milk and then you get the coffee. You could have fun with it by adding different flavorings and syrups. For the traditional, which is the most popular, condensed milk and then the coffee. Other flavors, especially like the Fin and Earl, we add our homemade Earl Grey syrup, our homemade condensed milk, and our coffee. All right, so let's condensed milk. Put some Earl Grey right here. I don't usually add too much syrups because if you do that, uh, it kind of overpowers the coffee and you just want to complement that. Paul and I were just walking down Whole Foods, just trying to explore. I was in the spice rack and uh, I basically picked up like some Earl Grey and I was sniffing it and I was smelling it. I was like, oh, try it with coffee, see if it works. And it was delicious. There's different types of fins and there's different ways of making Vietnamese coffee too. The size of the grind and everything else associated with it. You put coffee in here, there's a filter press, you place it on top and you add hot water, right? And then you place the cover and then the coffee would just start steeping down, down here. It's like so a pour over. Slow drip. Slow drip, right? And now this is what we use for production right here. So that we have like tons and tons of these. This fin here takes around like, you know, around three to five minutes for it to steep. And this big fin here, uh, about 45 minutes and longer. So just to give you a little reference and gauge how mm -hmm. kind of labor intensive and how long it is to make each batch of coffee. I moved here from the Philippines when I was 16. And oddly enough, the first class that they sent me to um, was an English class and there was only one chair available and it was in the front row and it was next to him. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. technically how we met is literally like he was the first person that I spoke to. There was no um, Tinder back then, so. No, <laughs> plus you were in high school. So then that's how we met, um, went to prom together and um, we've been together for 17 years. Yeah. I basically asked her out the last day of high school. So we're more like college sweethearts. We've always talked about like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we have our own coffee business? It was just like, really just like dreaming, right? And then um, I started the MBA and they said, okay, for the next two years of your life, you have to write about, you know, like something for your business plan. And I automatically thought coffee. Hong usually tells the story during our workshop. Essentially, I was watching this show, I think it's Esquire Network or something mm -hmm. like that, and it was called um, Farm to Cocktail. So I was watching that, and then I was just like, this is a cool idea. 
It was just like taking a shower and it was just like light bulb. Vietnamese coffee is iced. We can I, do I, this. I, I remember that. So basically I came home from work one day. She was just running downstairs. Hey, she just got out of the shower. All she had on was a towel, right? And before I even put anything down, she was like, babe, I know what I want to do for my project. It was like such a cool concept and I honestly didn't know if it was going to work. I just knew that because it was iced coffee, you're mixing products and you're shaking it up. Isn't that, you know, the best way to combine stuff? So it was actually our friend Rafa, I remember, who gave us the idea of like, here, give, he's like, give me a, you know, give me some coffee. I'm gonna go around yeah. giving people samples. And I was like, so busy, didn't know what to do. So literally we just gave him one. And then he went around giving samples. I was like, oh, okay. So this is how we're gonna get people enticed to come to our booth to begin with. As far as catering, I remember though, like one time I told him, I was like, let's go ahead, do door to door. Like, let's just print out flyers. We got a lot of closed doors, obviously, because, you know, it's private companies. You can't just walk around giving people flyers. But to be honest, like, we have one client and she has brought us for, like, three different companies now that she's been in. And so just from that one flyer, that was really amazing. We were basically booked out already and we have bookings for like for the next like year and a half and then in one week all of that literally like just canceled in like two days all of it gone and so you know we didn't know what we were going to do and then kind of fast forward a few weeks later we had a few friends who work for google and they were very critical because they literally pushed us they're like hey you know can you do this like it was kind of like yeah, we can, we just didn't know how to go about it because we have no experience in shipping. We have no experience in like teaching. Like literally, like we didn't know where to go about like having to create a kit. Started like putting together this prototype of a kit. And then um, within a few days, we're like, okay, let's get ready to pitch. And so we pitched it to a couple of our friends then from there the word got around and then we didn't even get a chance to change like how the kit looks like we wanted the box to look even more sexier than yeah, it is it but like a really nice box but then it just kind of took off there's a lot more than just us like kind of like depending on the business so i'm just glad that it actually worked out and it actually saved us from the pandemic and it was the reason why we even got our own space to begin with Right now, the first thing that we have um, are virtual classes. So since the pandemic started, um, we pivoted a little bit to Finbar kits. And so we do Vietnamese coffee workshops. We started the kits and that's all we did. And then everything started opening up and then now we're doing caterings. And then now um, we also have the Sunday service, which we never had before. So then we have to prep for that. It's tons of teamwork. So she handles more of the uh, admin side of Finbar and I handled more of that, you know, making the product and doing the operations. The third part of Finbar, you probably don't see, is, is actually her dad, my yeah. father-in-law. Um, he, he makes the coffee, he, yeah. he makes all of these uh, fancy yeah. projects as you see. Well, we actually tell people, it's fun fact, is um, majority of the cups that we use are stickers and every single one is actually done by my grandma yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she actually puts the stickers on every single cup and so sometimes we get like that like special one where there's like two stickers on one cup mostly probably because like she's been watching her drama yeah, and she got <laughs> she got really like it's a very intense thing so she she basically forgot It's just like the best thing you can ask for as a business. It's just like you feel like you actually have a connection, have a relationship with your customers, which really like is what we're we're trying to do. We don't want you to just get your coffee and then walk away. Like we want you to come in, get an experience of actually like talking to a friend and feeling like you're actually part of this journey with us.